In Cyberpunk 2077, it's possible to betray the majority of characters you meet, and this even includes the player character V when you get to play as Johnny Silverhand. These terrible decisions are often easy to miss as a lot of them are hidden and frequently involve exploring other options or deliberately going against the mission objectives. The choice to betray or abandon different characters has a range of complex short-term and long-term consequences, including who lives or dies, what quests you have access to, and the relationship you have with different characters. However, it requires many playthroughs to compare and understand which decisions matter and where various quest lines diverge. Starting with the pickup. The pickup from Act 1 involves preparing for the heist by retrieving a stolen flathead bot from Maelstrom, specifically Royce. Most people side with Militech by making a deal with Meredith Stout or one of the Maelstrom leaders, Royce or Rick. If you follow the optional objective and meet up with Stout before entering the All Foods factory, you can side with her by either giving Royce the cred chip while it is spiked with a virus, or fighting and taking down Maelstrom and saving the cred chip to hack for money later. Since you sided with Stout, you'll have the option of meeting her in the Notel Motel and collect the iconic weapon Sir Falaf Stiff. In the scenarios where you attack Maelstrom or are attacked by Militech, you can also decide to rescue Brick, the previous leader of Maelstrom, and depending on which Maelstrom leader remains, it'll impact the gig Second Conflict at the Totem Tans unlocked in Johnny's questline in Act 3. If Dum Dum survived the pickup, you have the option to kill him and will have a chance at getting his iconic pistol, Doom Doom. Alternatively, to betray Stout, you can hack the chip removing the virus before giving it to Royce, or if you're a corpo, you can warn him about the spiked chip. Cred's right here. Oh, and a virus? Militech's way of saying hello. They're out gunning for you. Oh, shit! Fucking neural napalm! Would have fried everyone on the subnet. Probably copied our data to Militech data forts, too. Another option is paying for the flathead using your own money. Ultimately, betraying Stout after meeting her results in Militech attacking all foods, her eventual death, and outside the factory, Gilchrist will show up instead. Anthony Gilchrist. Still alive. And not hogtied for a change. Militech don't forgive. Militech don't forget. Acquaintance of yours? Yep. Familiar face from my past life. There's already a lot of options here, but the one that lots of people miss, and makes Jackie happiest, is if you don't side with Militech or Maelstrom. To avoid siding with Militech, you can either not call Stout in the first place, or call her and not attend the meeting. She'll eventually send an angry text if you ghost her once you enter the All Foods plant. To avoid siding with Maelstrom, you can either pay them with your own money, resulting in a peaceful encounter, or kill both Royce and Brick. This time, when you exit the All Foods plant, neither Stout or Gilchrist will be waiting. Instead, Jackie will approve because you did not work with the Corpos and aren't in any debt. No begging, no debt, no Corpo strings attached, and the Flathead's ours. <laughs> That's the way to do biz, V. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Got lucky today. Well, ain't you a ray of sunshine? But V, it ain't a matter of luck. You decide. Remember that. Ah, I love this town. The city of endless opportunity and brotherly hate. But if you got the cojones and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. Next, the Alder Caldo questline. You initially meet the Alder Caldos in order to get Pan Am's assistance in kidnapping Hellman, the engineer behind the biochip. According to Rogue, he will be transported by Kang Tao in an AV, and there's a dead zone where neither Kang Tao nor the NCPD can easily interfere. 
Then, V works with Pan Am to retrieve her Thornton, and she eventually devises a plan to overload a nearby power station, causing an EMP that in theory should knock the Kang Tao AV out of the air. Although the EMP isn't enough, Pan Am hits it with a rocket, which finally brings it down. On the way towards the AV, you hear Mitch and Scorpion heading towards the crash site, and you're unable to radio them, likely because of your proximity to the EMP. Once V and Pan Am arrive at the crash site, this is an easy to miss point of divergence. Normally, players would secure the crash site, find that Hellman is no longer at the site, and Mitch is taken hostage by a Kang Tao guard. While talking to the guard, you have a few options. Firstly, if you kill the guard yourself, or choose only aggressive dialogue options, you will get no useful information from him. Since you get no information about Hellman's whereabouts, you have to follow a pair of tracks. You use these tracks to simulate the vans and their movement, which appear as a pair of holograms. The tracks lead to an airfield where they left behind a handful of guards and eventually the petrol station. Since this method takes the longest to track down Hellman's location, there's already another transport landed on the rooftop and additional enemies defending Hellman. However, if you tell the guard that you're only looking for Hellman and reveal that all the Calder reinforcements will be there soon, they'll let you know that they are headed west to the gas station. All the Caldos will ride up here I, any minute now. They're headed west for the gas station, but I can't guarantee they're still there. This time, since you know Hellman's location, the Aldecaldo's knowledge of the area comes in handy. Mitch confirms that the guard wasn't lying as they recognize the station and are likely hunkering down and waiting for reinforcements. I need the man who was riding this AV. Pilot said they headed west. Yep. Took him with them. In our cars. Pilot was telling the truth. There's an old gas station out there. Must be looking for a way to call base. Also, Pan Am is aware of a shortcut and can lead you straight there. Let's delta to that station. Hope you know a shortcut. Mm-hmm. Get ready. Since you arrive at the station earlier, the transport has yet to arrive and there's less enemies. Regardless of whether you get the information or not, in both of these options, Mitch is grateful to V for saving him, and Pan Am provides covering fire when you go to get Hellman. Everything okay? You need anything? Thanks for saving my ass, V. Sorry about your people, but I need to keep moving. Since you saved Mitch, if you go to the Aldecaldo camp before they are attacked by Wraiths, he will ask V for a favor. If you agree, this unlocks the quest I'll Fly Away, where V can help with Scorpion's funeral. At the end of this side job, you'll receive a Mortal Kombat statue of Scorpion and Stinger, which is a fairly strong iconic knife. Go on, it's yours. But what if there was a third option? I discovered this option in my third playthrough, but last I checked, it is still not discussed on any wiki and is likely not widely known. After surveying the crash site with the drone, V commits to helping Pan Am to rescue Mitch. Listen, we saw Mitch. They probably got Scorpion too. We'll find them, help them out. If they're still alive. They're alive. Everything's gonna be okay. However, you can ignore the mission objective and abandon her and Mitch at the crash site and drive straight to the gas station. Instead of having Pan Am providing covering fire for V, you have Johnny with his commentary. Once you eventually grab Hellman, V will be surprised that Pan Am shows up and she'll be disappointed that V left. She'll also explain that she managed to save Mitch. Pan Am? Why are you so surprised? Did the sun bake your brain? Unlike you, I don't bail, especially if I've already given my word. I managed to help Mitch at the wreck, but Scorpion, we didn't make it. I'm sorry. Normally, a while after the mission, Pan Am will message V debriefing about her situation as an Aldecaldo outcast, where she questions this newfound freedom and you can optionally tell her to return to her family. However, if you betrayed her and Mitch at the AV, she will instead be extra frustrated. Pan Am will also message you about Scorpion's funeral, stating that Mitch held the funeral on his own, meaning that abandoning them at the AV locks you out of the All Fly Away quest and the subsequent rewards. Lastly, there are long-term consequences as well. 
If you did not help Pen Am save Mitch, and depending on your future decisions in the Alicaldo questline, he will not leave a video message for you in the credits. Hey V, it's me, Mitch, remember? You saved my ass from Kang Tao. Well, it doesn't matter if you don't remember, cause, cause I do. Anyway, if you ever need help with anything, I got your back, alright? Next, Sol and Pan Am. In Cyberpunk 2077, the old Caldos are struggling financially, which at times throughout their questline leads to desperate high-risk situations. Desperate people don't think straight. The lack of income and firepower also makes them vulnerable to Wraith attacks, but only if the Wraiths can locate their base. Throughout the game, there's a clear difference of opinion between the members of the Alder Caldos about how to find future work. Sol, the leader of the family, attempts to break from their smuggling tradition by negotiating work with Corpos, specifically Biotechnica. However, Pan Am and eventually other veterans would rather raid Corpos and arm up in order to increase their rep and return to smuggling or as Mitch calls it, logistics. We would rather go back to plying the trade we know best. Logistics. Meaning smuggling. That's what I said. Enter V, an outsider to the family, but also a highly skilled merc with the power to solo an entire compound of wraiths and save Sol if they so choose. Of course, letting Sol die will end the Elder Caldo questline then and there. However, Saving Sol puts V in a unique position where they are liked by both sides and can influence which direction the Elder Caldos take. Ultimately, this decision comes to a head in the side job with a little help from my friends, where you're called by Pan Am to the Elder Caldo camp. According to them, there's a Militech convoy transporting a basilisk or armored panzer tank, which can be taken with the help of V. However, if the player believes that stealing the Basilisk and angering the corporations is a bad idea, they can betray Pan Am and go meet up with Sol. This is yet another option that does not show up on the mission objectives unless you discover it, but it has significant consequences if you decide to do it. Pan Am swayed Cassidy, Carol, and the others to help her grab the Basilisk. Fuck! She will never learn! How many more have to die before she hangs it up? Stop scheming. Pan Am's got good intentions. Pan Am has no idea what she's doing. The Raffins will not let up, and she wants to bring Militech down on our asses. Don't look great, no. Why have you come to me with this? I thought you'd be on her side. Just seemed like you'd want to know. Uh-huh, I would. Because it seems to me... Pan Am wants to oust me. Pan Am's got good intentions, I'm sure. Breaking up the clan is never good. I'll be in touch. If you betray Pan Am and tell Sol of their plans to steal the Basilisk, then they will fail and Pan Am will angrily berate V for ratting them out. Fuck, V! How could you? Hey, uh, glad you called. Do you seriously not know? Or did you pull some other shit thing besides ratting me out to Sol? You had a shit idea. I told you as much. Right. Yes. Thank you for your impeccable advice. Yet you might have stopped there and fucked off instead of also planting a knife in my back. It's all your fault. I can't believe it, actually. To put the whole clan at risk just to prove to Saul that you were right? Pan Am? Do you know what, V? Fuck you. On the other hand, Sol will be supportive and reward V with a red version of the Coyote. In this timeline or versions of events, the Alder Caldos never acquire the Basilisk and don't have the means to help V with the biochip issue, meaning you'll be locked out of the Alder Caldo ending. This is a shot of the bar in the afterlife. Notice anything different or anything missing? Next, betraying and firing Claire Russell from her job in the afterlife. Get you something? Claire is the bartender at the afterlife, and you meet her with Jackie as V is preparing for the heist in Act 1. She eventually calls V to see if they're interested in being a driver for a race, and you find out that these races basically have no rules aside from passing through checkpoints. 
After the third qualifying round, she'll apologize for deceiving V and reveal the real reason why she's participating in the race. Claire is convinced that her late husband and her original driver Dean was murdered by a corpo, Peter Sampson, during a finals race. According to Claire, Sampson had an insurmountable lead and Dean was apparently backing off when he slammed on the brakes causing Dean to swerve out of control and fatally crash. Evidently, Claire wants revenge and you have a range of options available. First of all, like many of the missions in Cyberpunk 2077, there are multiple points before the final race where you can refuse to participate or just say no and that will end the quest there. Doesn't really seem like my thing, Claire. Next, in the final race, Samson's car will be damaged, and if you follow Claire's demand by chasing him, he'll crash. Claire will then confront Samson, and if you interrupt her, you'll get to hear his version of events. According to Samson, Dean was trying to overtake when he rammed them and was within the rules of the race. However, at this moment, Claire doesn't accept his explanation and still wants vengeance. From here, you can either tell Claire to let him go, or allow her to kill him. If you decide to let Claire kill him, in his final moments, Samson will try to explain more about whatever Dean and him were up to, but Claire will end him before he gets to finish. Do what you will. Time to die, asshole. Wait, no! Your husband wasn't the saint you think! It's clear from the emails found on a PC in Claire's workshop and what Samson is about to say that there's more to the story, but like many other storylines in Cyberpunk, you'll have to make this decision without full context. Regardless, letting Claire kill Samson will lead to her giving you her car, Beast, and she'll eventually message apologizing to V where she'll discuss feeling guilty. Sometime later, you'll also receive a text from Regina stating the Cthulhu or Samson's car has just emerged from the abyss, meaning that someone probably picked up on the wreckage and fixed his car, putting it up for sale. Alternatively, you can talk Claire into letting Samson live. Yes, Claire. You'll let him go. Ha! You're fucking kidding me! Might be a grade A corpo shit, but he didn't murder Dean. Flatlining him? Won't make you feel any better. <laughs> Fuck! Claire, please! I can't even tell you how lucky you are, you fuck! I can't! No killing then? Let's go, V. Before I change my mind. In this case, she'll again give you Beast, however, when she messages you, She'll write a longer apology, specifically apologizing for manipulating V, and she'll be grateful to you for tagging along and preventing her from murdering Samson. In this version of events, Samson is alive and will also message V sometime later, gifting V his car, the Cthulhu, after getting it fixed. Unlike if Samson is killed, you can save a bit of money and Claire seems to be happier about the end result. In both of these scenarios, Claire treats you normally when you see her at the bar in the afterlife. Hey V, good to see you, how's it going? However, there are a couple of ways to betray Claire. First is one that is not listed on the objectives, but if you bail at the beginning of any of the races, you can effectively ghost her. This will result in Claire angrily texting V, and you can reply saying that you no longer want to race. The second way of betraying her is during the final race, when Samson has his scripted crash. You have the option of following him or ignoring Claire and finishing the race. We missed the turn. I know. We can still get him. I'm heading for the finish line, Claire. What the fuck did you just do? If you finish the race, this will deny Claire her chance to confront Samson and she'll be furious at V. We just see. What the fuck did you just do? I finished the race. That was my one chance, don't you get it? Claire, I saved your ass. You saved my? No, you saved his ass. And now he's out of my reach for good. Didn't give a thought to trauma team? He gets in an accident. They swoop in, chrome to the teeth, and pack an iron. You robbed me of my one chance to find justice for the man I love. Hope you're pleased with yourself. 
I'm out of here. In both of these scenarios, you will irreparably damage your friendship with Claire, she will not hand over Beast, and refuse to serve you at the bar in the afterlife. You? No, you can leave. I'm not serving you a thing. Little did she know that V could eventually become the owner of the afterlife. V, you've found your place. You own this city. Look at yourself. Queen of the afterlife. A legend. In both the rogue and the secret ending, if you decide to return V to their body, they will become a legend of Night City and owner of the afterlife. Unlike the other endings, in the secret ending you work with Johnny, not taking either of Misty's suppressant pills and infiltrate Arasaka Tower. In the epilogue, you return to the afterlife and Rogue is still alive and she seems to act as some sort of buffer between you and Claire, so in this scenario, things remain the same. However, the rogue ending plays out differently. In the rogue ending, V hands over their body to Johnny using the pseudoendotrizine pill from Misty. After, Johnny in V's body heads to the afterlife to meet Rogue. When you pass Claire, she'll refuse to serve Johnny since he's in V's body. Almost like they was one person. I'm looking for Rogue. We reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. Yeah, good role. Unlike in the secret ending version, Rogue dies and when you return to the afterlife, Claire is no longer working at the bar. Although it seems to happen off screen, I assume she either quit or V fired her when they became the owner of the afterlife. I really think they should have put at least a stand-in or maybe even the dancing robot from Kabuki in her place. While we're discussing Johnny and the rogue ending, it's possible to make some terrible decisions while playing as Johnny. When you first meet Rogue in the afterlife, she's guarded by Crispin Whalen, and when Johnny takes over, he recognizes Crispin as Andrew Whalen's son. Although Andrew is seemingly not alive in 2077, his son Crispin is interested in becoming a legend himself. He any good? Aiming to be an NC legend before long. Hmm, aren't we all? When raiding Arasaka Tower, Wayland chooses not to jump from the AV to split up Arasaka reinforcements. Saving Wayland will result in him conversing with Johnny and Rogue, supporting you in the Atom Smasher fight, and waiting at the bar if you choose to return V's body to them. Wayland, back and better than ever? Ready and wait. Did you tell everyone here about that stunt you pulled at Arasaka Tower? What do you think? Claire must have heard it three times already. But what you plan to do today, V? I mean, respect. Nothing else will ever come close. Take good care of yourself, and good luck. Thanks. One memorable moment is when Waylon hears Rogue refer to V as Johnny, he figures out who is in V's body and offers to treat them in exchange for stories from the past. Don't know, Johnny. We were young. Hot blood in our veins, shit judgment in our heads, like all pups. We fought for beauty, not knowing what was good or true. It was only the beautiful that meant a damn thing to us. Don't let your mind wander. We'll kick around old brain cells over vodka once we're done. My treat, eh? Or people with stories of the olden days, just like my grandparents. However, if you abandon Waylon at the AV crash site, Rogue will confirm his death and be furious at Johnny. We're going after Wayland. Don't have the time to waste. He'll be fine. Almost forgot what an asshole you are. Fine, do what you want, but I'm helping Wayland. You piece of shit! Wayland's dead! Meet me in the atrium now, or you'll regret it! Obviously, you'll then have to face Smasher alone, and he will not be present in the afterlife if you choose to return the body to V. Next up, the side job Sinnerman. Sometime in Act 2, you'll receive a call from Wakako offering you a golden opportunity, which funnily enough means it's a questionable job. Even the description of the side job tells you to avoid this one. 
Unlike a lot of the other gun for hire jobs in Cyberpunk, the client wants to tag along which should already trigger alarm bells. When you decide to do this quest, you'll meet up with Bill Jablonski. He'll bring his own pickup and explain that he's spending his life savings hiring a merc to hunt down and kill his wife's murderer, Joshua Stevenson. Unfortunately, Jablonski doesn't consider that Stevenson is being escorted by NCPD and that killing in public means getting spotted, meaning reinforcements. After meeting him, you can either drive the wrong direction or just leave him in the pickup. Doing either of these will fail the quest, but potentially spare him. Beat it! Get the fuck out! You're useless! However, if you successfully chase down the patrol car, Jablonski will want to shoot Stevenson himself, but get killed by an NCPD officer in the process. From here, there are a few options. First of all, if you ignore the job tracker but listen to Jablonski's initial requests, you can kill the NCPD officer and Stevenson, ending the quest chain there. After killing Stevenson, you'll have to deal with NCPD reinforcements, but with the right build, they're easy enough to deal with. Then, you can call Wakako to collect the reward for completing the mission. Job with Jablonski. It's done. Stevenson's in a better place now. And? Think anything of it? Professionals don't sit around and think. They do. Well said, V. Eddies are on their way. Alternatively, you can not attack and hear Stevenson out. This is probably one of the strangest quest lines that you'll encounter in the game, and it gives you multiple chances to opt out and leave. Ha! <laughs> That's it. Got no fucking idea what this is about. But if you don't go with them, I'm never talking to you again. Apparently, Stevenson experienced a religious epiphany while in prison and has been communicating with the families of his murder victims requesting forgiveness. Although it sounds like a cliché redemption story, his belief, or I suppose faith, is genuine, which makes him the perfect subject for Braindance scrolling. Since Braindance's capture a first-person experience of an event, including the emotions of the recorder, Corpo saw a prime opportunity to make money from Stevenson's authenticity. At the house of one of Stevenson's victims, you'll meet Zuleika, the sister of the deceased. While here, you'll discuss how he delayed his execution by working with a brain dance studio to record himself dying by crucifixion. Stevenson believes that doing this will show the people of the world unconditional love, and theoretically, his emotions and unshakable belief would show up on brain dances, resulting in a fat paycheck for the producers and their studio. However, the success or failure of the brain dances is heavily influenced by V, and you can choose to either support Stevenson, making the brain dance a success, or doubt and ignore him, resulting in failure. Ultimately, supporting Stevenson could be considered a betrayal of Jabonski's initial requests, since he likely won't fear his death, instead accepting it. Don't want to pray. But I'll be right here by your side. In this version of events, after the BD goes public, the corporate producer, Rachel, will call you excited by the initial sales and send V a bonus on top of the payment. Hey! Seen the opening numbers? Stevenson's a hit! That BD? Shouldn't have released it, really. Get all that shit I said to you. Eddie's will hit your pocket soon. And should I mention there'll be a bonus? Enjoy! However, planting the seed of doubt by questioning and at times ignoring Stevenson will result in him doubting himself and likely fearing death. I don't want to pray. Okay, then um, just give me a second. This version of Stevenson's death could be considered more gruesome than just shooting him after the initial car chase and somewhat fulfill Jablonski's initial request of smelling his own fear before he dies. I want to see the light in that motherfucker's eyes go out. Whoa, why? So he can smell his own fear before he dies. A while later, Rachel will call V furious that they messed up the brain dance 
and she'll threaten to ruin V's reputation and make it impossible for them to find work. You! You fucked everything up sideways! He doubted? D hesitated? We didn't get that damn doom! I'll burn you to the fucking ground! Good luck ever finding another job! Next, betraying Judy. Get lost. There are multiple times in Judy's questline where you can upset Judy by failing to call and update her on your quest to find Evelyn Parker. You can also agree with Fingers or follow Johnny's advice being inconsiderate towards Evelyn. What do you think? What do I do now? What we came here to do. Find the truth. Ask her. Johnny, she's unconscious. Or she's a better actor than we thought. Inspired by her experience working at the Mox, where the workers overthrew their Tiger Claw oppressors, she wants the same for her friends in Clouds. The first important aspect to her plan is contacting Maiko, her ex and mid-level management of Clouds. Maiko's position is managing Clouds from the shadows, above Woodman but below the Tiger Claw member Hiromi Sato. It's clear from her attitude towards V that she thinks that she's untouchable, or that she's used to dealing with mercs and clearly not intimidated by them. Although, reading her email exchange with Judy shows that she prioritized her own position and career above relationships. This foreshadows that she's likely to do the same, especially when it involves workers below her. Understanding the need for fighters, Judy calls V and modifies the doll's behavioral chips with a motor reflex system that replaces their body's natural reflexes with that of highly trained experts. These program skills take V by surprise and convince Maiko and V that the plan has a chance of success. Everything chill? You okay? Ha <laughs> Look at me go! You see that? Woo! You gotta do some cardio! It. Just say it. Who, me? This is my impressed face. During the mission Pisces, Judy's friends are left to deal with the Tiger Claw presence in clouds, whereas V heads to Sato's apartment where Maiko is already showing the Tiger Claw's BDs. Maiko then reveals her real plan to replace Hiromi Sato as upper management of clouds, meaning she'll also be joining the Tiger Claws. She argues that allying with the Tiger Claws would be the only way to protect Clouds from other gangs. During this whole exchange, Judy is on call with V and tells V to stop Maiko and end the Tiger Claw bosses. Over my dead body, we were gonna get rid of them! Here's where there are quite a few decisions available and they impact V's relationship with Judy, the future of the club, and the workers. First of all, if you side with Maiko betraying Judy, the Tiger Claw bosses will kill Sato, agree to let Maiko have control over Clouds, and Maiko will offer to pay V for their performance. Thanks V. First transfer from Cloud's new manager coming your way. If you accept the payment, Judy views V as a heartless merc that prioritizes the highest bidder, and she will no longer believe anything that V says. Bullshit! You're just spewing words now, V. You took her eddies, so the sitch is clear, cut, and dried for me. You're a merc. She's a soulless, conniving bitch, and I'm a sorry-ass gonk. Sometime later, you will receive a text from Judy stating that she is leaving the city and will delete you from her contacts. This means that you will be locked out of Pyramid Song, Romancing Judy, and not receive any of the associated rewards, the Mox shotgun, and Max Stack uniform. Alternatively, if you don't accept the money, Judy will listen to V's explanation, and you will still unlock Pyramid Song and the rewards. Fine. Oh, I'm sorry. Got carried away. Just, this ain't how I imagined things panning out. But, guess I should get used to it. No matter what you do. Life's always gonna throw you a curveball. Thanks for the help, V. Thank you again. If you decide to complete Pyramid Song in this timeline, Judy will inform V that Clouds is no better under Maiko than it was run by Woodman or Sato, and she's left disappointed. Maiko's holding all of Clouds at gunpoint. 
decides every little thing, apparently. But... No but. Talk to the dolls. They don't see any change. Everything's just like it was before. Got a feeling everything we did was wasted effort. However, things change if you decide to stick to Judy's original plan and declare Clouds' independence, or avoid supporting Maiko by staying quiet. Dolls of Clouds are declaring their independence. Club will be run by them, and only them. In this scenario, the bosses, and eventually Sato, will attack V. After defeating them, Maiko will confront V, and if you provoke her with your dialogue choices, she will attack you. Since she witnessed Tom knock V down, she believes that her doll chip will also be enough to beat V. However, having seen it once before, V easily wins. Matter of fact, I do. Either you walk away and never come back to clouds, or I end you here and now. I see you got everything planned out, but you forgot just one thing. I've also got a doll chip. <laughs> Alright, V, get out of there. Exits on the lower level of the apartment. Then find the elevator. Judy's reaction to these events will depend on whether or not you took Maiko down lethally or non-lethally. If you kill Maiko, Judy will be shocked and will need time to process the situation. You killed her? Oh my fucking god. You killed her? Would have happened if she hadn't come at me. Wasn't my fault. <sighs> Sorry, but I don't buy that. Could have found another way. Michael knew what she was starting, what she was doing. She knew it could all come crashing down. I thought she was untouchable all her life. Well, not my fault she was wrong. I, uh, I gotta process all this in peace, alone. However, if you take her down non-lethally or select non-aggressive dialogue, she'll thank V, and if you are playing female V, then she'll kiss them on the cheek. I don't need to believe that. I just know it. Thank you. In this scenario, when you get to Pyramid Song, she'll let you know that the Tiger Claws retaliated, killing Tom, Roxanne is on the run, and Clouds is shut down. Tiger Claw no next took revenge for Hiromi and the rest. There was a firefight. Tom's dead. Roxanne barely got out alive. House is closed until further notice. I'd rather not talk or think about it. Again, you'll also receive the rewards for completing the quest. Ultimately, Judy's plan to liberate Cloud seemingly fails, showing how difficult life can be in Night City, but your relationship with her and the fate of the workers at Clouds is in your hands. Next, Carrie and the Uscrax. Carrie's questline is unlocked in Act 3, either after meeting up with Rogue at the drive through cinema, or after the oil fields if you deny Johnny the opportunity to reconcile with Rogue. During all of Carrie's missions, you can ditch him and he'll angrily text you about him being a busy man, thus failing the various side jobs. However, what's equally interesting is his interactions with the Us Cracks. Despite Carrie's financial success, as shown by the mansion where you initially meet him, he is insecure about being in the shadows similar to his samurai days. Fugly as seafood barf. Hope it was expensive at least. Something's gotta justify this level of tacky. It doesn't help that Johnny was quite abusive in the past, as shown in the flashbacks, where he shows up late to gigs and shoves Carrie aside. Similar to in Carrie's samurai days, he is afraid to be overshadowed by the ice cracks, as they are set to perform covers of his songs and he tries to destroy their equipment to stop them. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Since blowing up their stage equipment only serves to garner more media attention for the Us Cracks, he tries confronting them in person. In the side job, I don't want to hear it, Carrie tasks V to accompany him in confronting the Us Cracks while packing some iron. 
If you decide to continuously threaten them, they'll eventually get a restraining order against Carrie, and they won't appear in the following quest off the leash. Since they don't have a good relationship with Carrie, he doesn't recommend V to Blue Moon and will lock you out of the quest every breath you take. You're here. Although threatening the Uscracks is what you are originally tasked to do, a much better outcome is when you find common ground by discussing the deal their managers made behind their backs. Instead, the Uscracks will cancel their performance, causing the corpse they work for to lose millions. Seriously? You'll lose millions? They'll lose even more. Instead of a restraining order, they'll do a collaboration together with Carrie, which is a hit, as shown by the packed venue with media and fans. The successful scene of fans and reporters is a stark contrast to the empty venue if you decided to threaten the Oscracks. Next, Carrie will recommend V to deal with Blue Moon Stalker in the side job every breath you take. According to Blue Moon, she's been receiving death threats and wants V to catch the stalker in the act. She also requests to take them down non-lethally to avoid media attention. Typically, you can identify the correct stalker by either taking her down and finding evidence in her pack, confronting her as she introduces herself as Green Cloud, having the initials GC, entering the gun store, Nice nickname, Green Cloud or just waiting till the end and taking her down as she tries to kill Blue Moon. However, there are multiple ways to betray Blue Moon. First of all, you are asked to follow from a distance, so if you get too close or attack the thugs that harass her, she'll complain that you're not taking the job seriously and fail the quest. Another option is letting the stalker shoot her, which results in Blue Moon's death and causes Red Menace to rush down and confront V. If you select the aggressive dialogue option, then she'll attack V and you can kill her resulting in two of the three Uscrax members being dead. You were supposed to protect her! How could you let this happen? How, you dumb bitch! I don't like your tone. Better watch it. Oh, I'll watch as you choke and- Lastly, it's possible to identify the wrong person as the stalker. The optional objective suggests that you check all the floors of the roundabout and on the top level there's a man taking photos. If you decide to confront him about taking the photos, one option is to ask if he noticed anything unusual while taking those photos and he'll mention the girl in green which points you towards the correct stalker. Mm -hmm. Take pictures of her often. Yeah, why? That against the law? Anyone hang around her too much? Try to think. Why would I spill that? Because if some psycho decides to off Blue Moon, you won't have anyone to snap stills of. Girl in green, over there. See her in every single frame. Funny, ain't it? However, if you choose to attack him immediately, or choose not to ask about the photos, you may think he is the stalker, and after killing him, you have the option of claiming that you have taken the stalker down. Your stalker's dead. Problem solved. Fuck! We have a deal, V! No killing! Better him than you though, right? Well, yeah, but... Ugh! Okay, I'll handle this. Make sure nobody spills to the media vultures. By me. Thanks for your help, I guess. Even though you've taken down the wrong stalker, this will result in the job being complete and sometime later Blue Moon will send you the eddies for completing the job. However, another day or so later, Red Menace will text you panicked and furious that Blue Moon has died and that V got the wrong person. In this case, her death seems to be even more gruesome than simply getting shot on the bridge. Overall, there's plenty more hidden options and quests where you can betray or abandon people like leaving during River's questline or the inverse where saving Takamura is not listed unless you go discover it. But I've covered a lot of these options in my previous videos, so check them out if you haven't already. Hope you found this video interesting. 
There's more Cyberpunk 2077 videos to come, so make sure to interact with the video and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time, Tubes.